Hi everyone, my name is Leon Papkoff. I'm the Executive Vice President of Workplace Experiences at Impiction. It's a pleasure to be here today. Today I'm going to walk through creating a reservable workplace for the hybrid workforce using desks, spaces, and things. And we're really going to kind of dive into all the different aspects around that. So let's get started today. Um, some of the key learning and objectives that I'm going to be focusing on today are why, are employee, why do employees need to be connected to the workplace even when working remotely? How desks and conference room booking technology helps companies support a flexible workplace? The emerging types of activities, perks, and interactions that can be reserved in advance. These are all very hot topics right now in the industry as we all know. Today, what we're finding out there, and this is through a number of different sources on the internet and prominent analyst companies that are looking at these types of analytics in real time, 85% of decision makers feel that technology is important to return to work planning. 52% of workers would prefer a more flexible working model post pandemic. 52% expressed the desire for a hybrid workplace model with the option to choose to work remotely or from the office. 40%, 47% of people feel that their workplace does not enable them to work productively. 70% of employers worry, are worried about company culture, want people back in the workplace. They're concerned about the culture. 94% of investors claim that COVID-19 will continue to accelerate the adoption of technology in the workplace. These are all really important aspects of what is currently happening in real time. Now, the new employee journey must accommodate anytime, anywhere access to the workplace tools that make it easier to navigate and engage with a distributed workforce across content, communications, spaces, and smart automated experiences. Really the big aspect around here is a distributed workforce. This is a really challenging aspect for more companies and a major pivot that has occurred since COVID. Um, this is causing a number of big hurdles for companies and challenges. Let's focus on three areas um, that, that we're seeing these challenges. The first is around people. Uh, people today and employees today um, are forced now in changing local guidelines that are affecting how they come in. This is hard for people to understand as those capacity limits and things like that are going to change from city to city across an entire organization. Phased re-entry is also challenging for people where some of their co-workers may be invited to come back to the space one month and you may have to wait a couple months before you're allowed to come in. And so this can cause challenges for people, especially in collaboration environments. Um, employees come and go at variable days of the week. This is also challenging. People don't know when people are coming in. Prior to COVID, people would always realize that everyone's usually in the office by 9 a.m. Now it's varied across the scope and people don't fully understand when people are coming in. Um, growing inequity in employee experiences. This also could be challenging. We've all experienced those environments where a uh, few of us are in physically in a conference room or a meeting room, and we have one or two people that are joining virtually. That always is a challenge as we always feel that people joining virtually, it's harder to get words in when you have a very stimulating conversation that's going on. We're seeing more of that occurring, especially as we're all working from home. Uh, accommodating social distancing can be challenging. We've all seen this out in the real world, going to restaurants and being in different environments. Are you standing far enough away from each other? Some people are very used to working close together. Some really want that distance out there and it can be challenging. In the spaces area, uh, no longer are we seeing a one-to-one -one desk ratio. You know, the days where you would have your own cubicle or your own office are pretty much going away. There's still some assigned seating happening, but um, having your own desk, uh, this is also creating challenges where when you bring personal items in to the office, where do you store those items? Do you store them in a locker? Um, how, are you, how are you protective about the items that you have in the office space? Um, walled offices are sitting empty, so we're, we're really wasting a lot of real estate that a lot of companies spend a lot of money on. Um, conference rooms are used incorrectly or underutilized. They'll, you'll see one person in a conference room that seats 10 people just because they needed to have a private area. Maybe they're doing an important meeting and needed to take their mask off during that time frame, so they're really kind of being underutilized. 
um, an increase in the number of zombie bookings um, that impact usage. Uh, what a zombie booking is, is basically you book uh, a meeting room and you, you're not in the room. You don't show up to the room. So those are considered zombie bookings. And so that's impacting a lot of the metrics and the utilization that we're seeing in spaces. These are, these are challenges. Um, on the technology side, we're seeing inadequate technology to manage desks, rooms, and other spaces that are occurring. Um, we're seeing incomplete or inaccurate workstation analytics. Um, people aren't coming in, they're reserving spaces, they're not coming in. Things like that are, are becoming challenging. Uh, people are gathering together in certain areas of the office and ignoring other areas of the office. So real challenges there. Um, companies are, are challenged with coming up with how to create a more touchless environment. Um, you know, a lot of the old ways of doing work is you would touch everything on screens in the office space, you book conference rooms on screens outside the conference rooms. Are work environments cleaning those? Is that really the best way to do it is to touch a screen or be involved in that? Uh, and, and there's certainly other ways to do that. There's siloed technology and tools for niche use cases. This is a huge challenge. A lot of organizations have purchased technology from different vendors um, around the world and you may have uh, touch screens in one office location that doesn't communicate well with other touch screens in another office environment, or you may have some occupancy sensors in one area of your office that are very different than occupancy sensors there. And having different types of technology makes it very challenging uh, to roll up into a more cohesive or central way of controlling environments. So these can be also very challenging. Okay, let's dive in a little bit more. So let's reimagine the workplace with a reservation type of lens. How would that appear in the environment? Um, when you make things bookable in an office, you can increase awareness and transparency for employees, managers, and operations. This ends up being a win-win-win across the board because if you have employees where it's a much better employee experience, it's a lot easier for them uh, to manage any of their desk reservations, conference rooms re reservations, you're putting really the power in their hand. This is also easier for managers to really understand when coworkers are planning on coming in and how that environment's actually gonna work for them. It, it really makes it a lot easier for them or even asking everyone to come into the office on a certain day so that they can do a collaboration meeting. And especially for operations to really get the analytics around that. What, are the, what is the utilization within a given capacity limit in the office space? Um, how can you spread people out? Where are the most utilized areas in the office space? So getting those analytics for people that are managing the office environment can be a huge value prop for them, uh, something they didn't have pre-COVID. So some pretty exciting things. All right, let's dive in. We're going to first look at desks here. Let's talk about how desk reservations work, why it's important, and some of our top considerations. So looking at this, uh, reserving a desk or a workstation through hot desking, desk hoteling, and assigned seating. All of that is going to come into play. Obviously, assigned seating was all occurring pre-COVID. Now, hot desking and desk hoteling is becoming a very prominent need for the work environment. And this is what really allows um, companies to have a more flexible work environment. Um, employees come and go when they need, when they need to in real time. Um, and access bookable and available workstations. Even knowing where other coworkers are and when they plan on coming to the office is a strong demand and need. If you work in a small group where you guys collaborate a lot, you're more likely to come into the office when your coworkers come into the office, and that way you can collaborate with them a little bit better. Um, some of the top considerations around this are on-the-go, easy access to the desk and the environment. If you make it complicated, people aren't going to use it. You make it easy, they're going to use it every day. Um, IoT devices and compatibility. This is also really important. Everything is now being completely digitized in the work environment. There's IoT types of platforms bouncing up that can help you manage all of your types of devices from sensors um, to cameras to um, locking and unlocking doors in the building that are all managed through IoT platforms that can be a lot easier. And having a consistency across all the buildings and locations can also be a very big value prop as well. Uh, some, of, some organizations out there are also using a desk booking 
to enable their badge to actually work during the day and, and also to prompt a health form, making sure people are filling out health form. And a lot of this type of technology is also location aware. So it can help you manage navigation, things like that, that allows them to find the resources that they may have just booked. Okay, let's jump into now conference rooms or meeting rooms. So reserving a conference room or collaboration space in your work environment. Um, and these really need to be more in a, a supported, spontaneous or planned cross-functional team needs. Um, a lot of the demands we're hearing around this is really focused on um, key components of finding the right space and then having the ability to book that. Um, there's a lot that goes into planning an effective meeting, as we all know. Um, space itself is an important consideration when you're planning a very important meeting. Uh, if it's with a customer or if it's with your own coworkers, there's a really big importance around that. Is the room big enough to facilitate the people that you're planning on coming in? Does it have the necessary equipment? Does it have the right um, conference uh, system that's in the room? Is there a telepresence in the room? Do you have a whiteboard? Is there other kinds of equipment that are really needed there? So these are really important aspects around this. Um, people will also want on the go access um, to these environments. Um, they wanna make it easy, just like a desk. They wanna make rooms very easy. They wanna make it easy to invite people to those rooms. They wanna make it easy to search for those rooms and they wanna have rooms be favorites and make it a lot easier to rebook that room in a future date as well. Uh, so amenities, equipment, top considerations around this, um, and then also having uh, the capability of doing check-in um, or check-out capabilities around the technology itself. This will allow you to keep your overall space utilization at the highest number it can, and that's, that's one of the key things that we're looking at. So, okay, let's jump in now to just other types of spaces in the work environment that we're seeing out there. So uh, these are different types of spaces that are out there from phone booths where you need to duck in and do a quick cellular phone call to break rooms, tech cafes and booking appointments, um, lobby space if you have a number of people coming in, uh, games um, that are in the office, uh, fitness equipment even uh, that's in the office as well. Um, you, these can all be bookable. Um, and, and it makes it a lot easier to plan on things. Um, we've all probably been in that situation where if you have a fitness center in your office and you want to get a quick workout in uh, pre-work during lunch or maybe even after work, and sometimes those are the busiest times for everyone, how do you book a, a treadmill um, or any kind of fitness equipment? Things like that that can be very challenging. Uh, the, this demand is impacting the supply side of space. Um, a conference room is no longer a conference room. People are using it for other types of reasons nowadays. Um, and those are the, some of the big considerations that we're looking at around why this is more important. Again, on-the-go access is going to be a huge component. The usage metrics are going to be huge for operations and management within the organization. And um, um, looking at the patterns and the configurations that are going in are certainly going to be a consideration. Um, Configuration is a big thing where uh, people are downsizing the size of large conference rooms, mainly because they're not seeing as many people go into the office space nowadays where you have a number of uh, uh, smaller groups of people that are going into there. So they're looking at creating smaller conference rooms right now. Okay, let's go ahead and, and talk about some other key areas. Uh, services and amenities have always been really important, especially in key environments where uh, it's very challenging to keep workers engaged in the work environment. Um, I happen to live in uh, Silicon Valley here and keeping people employed at certain organizations is challenging for those organizations. A lot of employees will bounce around from one tech company to another tech co company out here. And so having these ad additional services and amenities can really um, separate um, a certain company over another for employees. So these are going to be things like... Um, Maybe there's, there's uh, daycare services or even dog sitting services, dry cleaning, different types of wellness classes like yoga or fitness. Um, mobile food ordering is a, is a big uh, request out here where everything's a lot more digitized in the work environment. Be being able to order food directly through a mobile app, things like that. Um, all these can be bookable elements in technology that we have today. 
Um, <clears throat> why is this important? As workers come back on site, services, amenities, um, will take to reservation systems to make them more accessible to everyone on the go. Um, we're all creatures of habit and adjusting to this is gonna be a big difference. I happen to be one of those individuals that like to look at, uh, do I have a booking for the next day or do I have a booking next week because there's a big meeting? Uh, can I go ahead and book uh, um, my daycare service that um, let the daycare service know I'm bringing in uh, my kid for the day? And can I drop off my dry cleaning? Things like that that are, that are going to be nice amenities for a lot of employees. Some of the top considerations around this is easy access again. How easy is it for me to do this? If I have to pull up, open my laptop every day or I have to call someone to reserve this stuff, if it's not easy to go on a mobile device, then Honestly, it's very challenging. You want to make it very easy on a mobile device. So no matter where you're at, if you're at home, if you're at a Starbucks, even if you're in the car, only do it when you're stopped in traffic. Don't do it while you're driving. You want to make it easy and accessible for people to book these types of spaces. All right. Um, other things we're seeing emerging around space is also, as we mentioned, dry cleaning, um, even book reading spots, phone booths, as we mentioned. Uh, visitor tours when visitors start coming back into the space. Uh, mother's rooms can be really important. Imagine that if you need a mother's room, how do I reserve a spot? Um, and can I reserve multiple spots over an eight hour day? Uh, gym appointments can be really important, even specifically uh, fitness equipment, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, coffee bar, if you want to uh, reserve a spot in a coffee bar so you can go down there at three o'clock, meet a coworker, have a meeting over a coffee. Uh, volleyball courts, um, games within break rooms, even basketball courts, um, educational sessions, trainings, webinars. These can all be reserved, booked, um, shuttle services. Uh, so overall, you guys get the idea, but a lot of different elements are really going to place in these work environments where they can be reservable um, and, and booked. Um, and so key elements to really kind of think about in your work environment. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, value props for the reservable workplace, high tech considerations and capabilities will shape the future of work and employee experience, giving way to um, increased flexibility to adapt to an ever changing workplace requirements. Uh, whatever technology or system you decide to put in place, it needs to be agile. You need to be able to pivot. Uh, a lot of organizations are trying different things out and then having to pivot to them. And so make sure whatever you do that you're able to adjust quickly and not just in one environment, but globally. Um, one of the other key things that we always look at is open up one part of your office first, keep those capacity limits at a limited thing, try out some new elements, meet weekly, and then look at pivoting and adjusting if you need to. Um, improve collaboration and co-opting potential. Um, this is an opportunity to take advantage of how do we increase collaboration? How do we add to this? Um, lean into the technology instead of resisting it to figure out how to come up with these things. Reduce costs, especially from hardware maintenance and utilities. Um, you got to think about the maintenance. Just because you're installing screens or equipment, does it require more IT people to maintain them? Uh, does it is it a battery connection? Does it require being connected to Wi-Fi? Does it require um, updates or firmware updates? Keep those things in mind. Um, overall, I would I would suggest or propose um, try to reduce your maintenance now that we're moving to a much more technology advanced environment rather than increasing maintenance and utilities around things like that. It's a really important aspect. Uh, better use of available space. So one of the things you're going to learn out of uh, a lot of metrics that are coming out of these environments is how can we use this space better? As I mentioned earlier, maybe you consolidate some of your larger conference rooms into smaller conference rooms, making it easier for people to duck in just two, three people to have a meeting. Um, creating environments like that can be uh, really conducive. Um, think about the space and how it's utilized so that you can better use it. Um, Boosted awareness, uh, thanks to technology that's out there. So a lot of times, um, talk about stories that are happening in the office. If people are finding it extremely convenient to book a desk, um, to book a meeting room, to book any type of activities, 
build more awareness around that. Uh, build some excitement around it in your environment. That's going to only increase the adoption of the technology, which is going to make it a lot easier. Some people are a little resistant to new technology, but I would embrace technology like this because it's here to stay and it's going to really help companies um, uh, be more efficient and actually measure things a little bit easier. So more streamlined, consistent protocols and expectations is a little bit easier to do when you have technology that's backing you up. Um, this makes it easier rather than some organizations that are still trying to figure this out on spreadsheets and things like that, which honestly some are out there doing that. So really lean into technology to help you uh, figure some of these out. Constant communication through mobile services is huge. Um, you know, don't be using email. Some companies are using email, but as we all know, in today's world, people are ignoring email. You have to figure out how to send notifications or send updates. Um, send constant communications to people so they know what's going on. One mistake that I've seen a lot of organizations make is not um, telling their employees um, what to expect when you come into the office. Uh, do I need to wear a mask? Uh, because we're at a lower capacity limit, Are we? Um, do we not have the cafeteria open? Well, that would be nice to know before I show up so that I have the awareness that I'm going to need to drive off-site to get some food for lunch during the day. Things like that through constant communication is going to be really important to people. Um, and always think about touchless and automated experiences across the landscape. Some people are going to be very um, reserved about touching different elements in the space. They're going to be very protective about it. They're going to be thinking about how, when was the last time this item was cleaned? Um, things like that that are going to be very challenging for some employees coming back into the space. So try to create a more touchless environment and use technology to help automate that experience. Okay, so the future of work is extremely mobile. It's agile, but it's smart and connected. Uh, technology can really help you enhance that experience and the analytics you're able to get around it is really going to enhance that experience for you. Um, and it's going to allow you to measure all these things. It's truly a connected, smart environment that you're looking for. The right tools and the technologies that can help shape the way we organize, occupy, and manage spaces is really where you should be focused and how you should adapt the technology and some of those key benefits out of it. Now, putting all those things together, we've created uh, what we call an employee journey slide that really allows you to understand how the standard employee will go through an environment like this. And at the very least, what I would use this slide to figure out is think about these different stages that the employee goes through. Um, you're going to look at the pre-stage. I'm getting ready to go into the office. What am I going to do in that pre-stage? Well, I'm going to probably book a desk. I might look at scheduling a workout. I'm going to find out what meetings I have in the office space that day. Maybe I need to arrange some childcare. The morning of me going into the office space, I may need to take a health survey. Think about that environment. Um, I may want to use QR codes to access different items um, around that. Um, I might want to check travel times. So with location services and guidance, how long is it going to take me to get into the office? You can do all those types of things as well. Getting directions is also part of that. Um, is parking a little bit easier now that we have more technology in the space? Is it easier to find a parking spot? Things like that. Or do you need to reserve a parking spot? Then going into the office, realize things like if you are moving to a flexible desk or work environment, do I need to think about lockers, digital lockers? Can I make those a touchless way? Can I open the locker up with a mobile app? Things like that. Um, how are we making food ordering a little bit easier in the cafeteria? Do we still have the buffet set up? Can I order food through a mobile device? How is that going to work? Same thing with coffee bars um, in your break rooms, as well as um, if you have a paid coffee service, things like that, that can also be very important. Uh, reserving conference rooms, being able to invite other individuals, doing it on the fly can, through a mobile app can also be very helpful as well. So think about how people are reserving conference rooms and how that's going to impact them. Um, um, joining meetings virtually, people are going to be certainly more mobile because they're either going to be in transit or they're going to be in the office or they're going to be from home. So how am I accessing meetings? Can I do that on a mobile device? Uh, we know you can do that on a laptop, but is it easier? 
How do I register visitors? How do visitors come in and go through a similar um, type of experience? Do they have to be pre-registered or are they required to take health checks? What kind of awareness and communication are you giving visitors? How, how are you going to make really important customers that come meet you on site feel very comfortable about being in that environment? These are all things to take into consideration. Um, filing facilities tickets or help desk tickets can also be really important. If you see something that looks really dirty and you want to make attention to it, how can you do that? Um, hopefully through better types of technology than just doing it through email. Uh, what happens in case of an emergency? How are you contacted? Do you need contact tracing in the environment or not? Those are considerations as well. Um, how do you get the latest and greatest news from an environment? And then the sequence will return again, um, day over, day over. And this is why technology and automation are going to be paramount for bringing um, employees back into the office space and making it very easy for them. So that's my presentation for today. I really want to thank you for, uh, for your time. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to contact me at my email address you can see here. Uh, we're very excited about helping and working with uh, people out in the environment. But again, thanks again for your time today. Appreciate it.